Hi again, it's Jason from Fraser Valley Rose Farm and I want to answer that question right off the top. Does size matter? And the answer to that one is of course yes. It makes a big difference in greenhouse performance, but it's not the only thing that makes a difference. Second major issue is how you use it. And in this case I'm talking about ventilation, heating, irrigation, all of those can make a huge difference in whether your greenhouse is small or whether it's larger, uh, how it performs for you. And finally I want to talk about the question of how it's all put together. A greenhouse like this uh, could be anchored into the ground, could be braced, all of those things. Don't skimp on the construction, don't skimp on the setup, uh, or you will regret it later. So I want to talk about all those three things in a general overview of greenhouses, uh, whether you're talking about something for your backyard or whether it's a small business. I'm not going to go into the really big ones, just the ones that are suitable for uh, homeowners or small market gardens. That'll be my overview today. So I answer the first question first is why do I insist that the size matters so much when it comes to your greenhouse? I said this a little bit when I was talking in my video on how to skin a greenhouse is that that it affects the thermal properties of your greenhouse an awful lot. And honestly, thermal properties are really what greenhouses are about. It's about controlling the growing environment inside, but the reason it's called a greenhouse and greenhouse effect is because it holds temperature. In a smaller greenhouse, the ratio of the floor area to the volume of the greenhouse puts it out of whack so that when you get sunlight, direct sunlight in a small greenhouse, you build up heat really, really fast. It's very easy to, in a small, let say, one of those clear polycarbonate or glass greenhouses, to pick up temperatures above 40 degrees Celsius very, very quickly if they're not well vented first thing in the morning, and that can be disastrous to plants. Uh, likewise, the other end of the thermal quality is how well your greenhouse holds temperature. So if you're in an environment like it's a cold day today, it's snowy outside, but it's actually nice and warm inside here. But as soon as the light turns off, as soon as the sun goes down, and this isn't picking up any more heat, how well does it hold that temperature? In a smaller greenhouse, the ratio between the volume of the greenhouse and the surface area of the greenhouse manages that it's going to let go of its heat very, very quickly. And mere minutes after sunset, you will have ambient temperatures. The outdoor temperatures will be the same temperatures that are inside your greenhouse. Whereas something like this, because it, has, it traps such a volume of air, it actually takes quite a bit longer for a structure like this to let go of all of that heat. So that's why I care what the size is. Now, the thermal qualities are the biggest reason. The second thing I will say is that if you are trying to make a business out of this, if you're a market garden or uh, something like I am, where you're a, a backyard nursery, the other things that you put into your greenhouse are cost too. Things like irrigation, heating, uh, insulation, um, you know, ground cloth, flooring, benches, and everything else. All of those other things that you add to a large greenhouse. The cost, of course, is larger when you add it to a larger greenhouse but you're spreading it over a larger quantity of plants. So typically if you're putting in an irrigation system in this one big greenhouse, it's going to cost you a lump sum of money. But in this case, the greenhouse is 25 feet wide and 95 feet long. So I'm spreading that over a certain number of square feet. If you have to do that in a bunch of smaller greenhouses or a bunch of smaller growing spaces, you'll multiply up the cost of those irrigation lines and it will get more complicated on you and you'll end up spending larger amounts per square foot again on your irrigation or your backup heating or any of the other facilities that you have in a, in a greenhouse generally if you do them in a larger amount you're going to spend less per square foot section two how you use it and honestly depending on whether you have a big greenhouse or a smaller greenhouse well you know sometimes that decision is made for you by the size of your yard or by the size of your business and you have to go for the smaller structure or economics and that's fine but then what you have to do is you have to change the way that you intend to use that greenhouse and certainly it may make a difference in your decision making about whether you grow tender crops in there if you have cold nights and you're counting on this greenhouse to protect those crops then maybe you don't put tropicals into that little greenhouse in your backyard uh, if you're expecting cold temperatures overnight. Uh, but the other thing you have to do is you have to talk about ventilation. Ventilation is huge. Uh, if you can invest in some automatic vents, they're, they're, those are on the market, that can open your vents for you first thing or as soon as they get up to a certain temperature, that's fantastic. You have to stay on top. Think of all of the parts of your greenhouse that can be vents, the door of your greenhouse. 
having that open early in the day can make a big difference in trying to keep that temperature under control. You can shade your greenhouse. That's another thing you can do is uh, there's things like it's a chalky paint that you get at the greenhouse supply stores called uh, Regusol, I think it is called. And you can paint that over top of the outside of the structure when you get to the heat of summer when it's just too much or you can hang uh, shade, uh, just shade fabric. So there's lots and lots of different ways that you can try to manage that excess of heat or you can add backup heat for overnight. So it's a matter of just being aware of the limitations of your small greenhouse and then using it for what it's appropriate for. Uh, other things that I find really interesting, things like having thermal storage. So uh, it's, a, it's a topic I've looked at before is where you can take the big barrels of water, uh, I'm talking about the, 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 the tall ones here, and, uh, and filling them with water. Uh, and in a cold environment, you may have to put some antifreeze in there as well, but those are actually thermal storage. So if you use those as the uh, legs for your benches, for instance, you, so you don't lose a lot of floor space, uh, those can be a great way of having the heat come in. Those will absorb the heat during the early parts of the day when it's really, really hot. And then they will also stabilize the heat on the back end when it turns overnight, they'll release some of that heat into the greenhouse environment. So there's lots and lots of different ways you can manage your greenhouse to uh, compensate for the limitations of a smaller greenhouse. Part three, let's talk about the construction of your greenhouse. And I'm not going to go deep into this because what is available to you will vary quite a lot from location to location, but it tends to be that the smaller kit style greenhouses are made out of either rigid plastic panels or glass panels. The advantage of the glass panels is that because they're fairly heavy, the framing has to be fairly heavy too. The ones I'm really kind of wary of are the ones that are made out of thin plastic, either acrylic or polycarbonate panels with a plastic frame and there's just no weight and no way to anchor them down. So they're quite vulnerable to damage. The ones that I'm more familiar with and are used usually on the smaller to mid-sized greenhouse scale is the plastic film that's stretched over the top of a metal frame, which makes for a very sturdy structure and also for a film that can be replaced every several years to keep its quality high and keep its tra light transmission right. So those are the ones that I usually go with. Spend a minute at the back end of this video talking cautionary here because I've seen people do their own backyard installations of little poly tunnels or hoop houses, uh, even bending the metal themselves. And there's nothing wrong with that. I love the ingenuity and the industriousness of people doing that themselves. The problem is that I've seen them fail all too often. Uh, I won't, you won't have to search very hard on the internet to find pictures of those that have come down under wind or have come down under snow and just collapsed because they're not properly installed. When you come to the size of the structure that this is, the manufacturer has made guidelines about how this should be installed. And they, those are based on sound engineering and based on the heaviest winds and heaviest snows that they can expect this structure to take. So when it comes to, for instance, how these how these ribs are installed in the ground. I've seen some installations where people are just tapping them into the ground, uh, again, in the do-it-yourself basis. These ones are all cemented into the ground. And I've seen the uh, installers on various structures around my other employers, and they all go by the guidelines. They dig a big hole, they, uh, they get that rib post in there, they uh, cement it in, and they attach it with bolts, and we inspect it regularly to make sure that it's all attached properly. Uh, so all of those ribs are in the ground. You're gonna see that across each of the ribs from section to section to section there are also all of these bars that hold them together so that one does not move independently from the rest of the structure and indeed from the corner we have a bracing bar there that goes up and then up again and connects with the rest of the frame if you look down the greenhouse here I'm gonna just whip around not trying to make anybody dizzy you can see that they repeat that across every section of the greenhouse. So there is just a ton of bracing that goes into this structure. And of course, everything is cemented into the ground as well, or concreted into the ground as well. Across the base, of course, we have uh, two by sixes uh, to hold the base of the poly. Uh, and then we have uh, cross ribs there that hold the poly as well. Some of the things that can be different about a big structure like this, and now I'm just gonna go into uh, fun zone here because you know, this, this is a very basic 
poly house and I'm going to look straight up and say it just goes to a peak at the top. One of the things I liked about working with some of the larger greenhouses at my employer was that across that top peak they actually had a roof vent and that roof vent could roll up or roll down based on temperatures and weather and gave you an incredible amount of control over the growing environment. I loved it. Not only did it have the vented sides or the vented top, it also had double poly with, uh, with air between it, meaning that it was a better insulator. And it also was a much larger structure. So this greenhouse here, as I mentioned, is about uh, 25 by 95. That one was about 33 feet wide by 125 feet. So it might even approach something like double the volume of this greenhouse overall. So again, you get all those advantages of the thermal qualities. And maybe I'll leave it right there and sum up by saying that whatever size greenhouse you have, and I have four of them here, which I'm, I'm quite happy to have, you're gonna look at somebody else's structure and whatever else is out there and say, wow, wouldn't it be nicer to have something, one of those uh, multi-bay attached greenhouses that they have in the big greenhouses where you can heat the whole thing with a boiler and just keep it perfect temperature year round. And it's true, you get wonderful growth in that kind of environment. Uh, but it's just out of reach for the size of my business. And I think that's the point I'm trying to make here is that yes, choose the largest greenhouse that is appropriate for your size, for your budget, uh, sorry, size of property for your budget, uh, for the size of your business or what you want to do with it. Uh, and then try to use it as to the best advantage you can. And if you have any questions about that, because I've been through this a little bit, uh, both professionally and here on the farm, uh, please feel free to drop those questions into the comments of the video and I'll see what I can do to help. Thanks.